wildfire season in Washington and across the West Coast is becoming an increasingly dangerous summer reality. We know the destruction these wildfires are capable of. We've witnessed the devastation in our neighboring communities. In Spokane, we've experienced firsthand the hazardous conditions brought about by the thick smoke that blankets the city for days or weeks. On this edition of Council Connection, we'll look at one method the city is examining as a possible way of slowing fire season down. Hi, I'm Councilmember Lori Kinnear, and welcome to Council Connection. Wildfires are here to stay. The question is, how do we mitigate our community's risk in the most cost-effective, efficient way possible so that Spokane doesn't become the next victim of a wildfire? The answer might surprise you. That's right, goats. These animals are self-propelled, biofueled weed eaters. In fact, they have a voracious appetite for the natural overgrowth that fuels wildfires. They eat the brush that makes firefighters' efforts to contain a wildfire a lot more difficult. Generally, herbivores are divided into two categories, grazers and browsers. Cattle and sheep fall into the category of grazers and tend to prefer the bulk cellulose of grasses and forbs. Goats, on the other hand, are browsers, and that's a big part of what makes them so good at fire fuel mitigation. Being a browser means that goats tend to feed on more readily digestible leaves, as well as the shoots of shrubs and trees within their reach. Goats will eat approximately 3% of their body weight per day of the dry matter weight of this forage. This makes them excellent fire fuel managers. Inspired by these facts, Spokane City Council, Parks Department, and the Fire Department have decided to team up to try using goats to help fortify Spokane against the ravages of wildfire. For us, it is a method to um, take proactive measures and reduce fuel where we have homes and other property that may be at risk. If we didn't have this opportunity or this ability to use uh, animals, we would actually have to use taxpayer money to go in and clear all of this area, which would cost literally thousands and thousands of dollars. What you're seeing right now in California, what we saw in Malden, uh, a lot of these lower fuels are carrying fire quicker with uh, wind behind them. So anything that we can do now during the off season to reduce them will pay off dividends uh, later in the summer. So for us and the fire ecosystem, it, it, takes, uh, it takes a lot from a community level to really invest in a number of different methods, not only fire suppression, but also proactive measures like uh, the councilwoman is supporting us doing and, and trying, getting out of what we're used to doing and into uh, alternatives to try to move that needle a little bit. After hearing from Chief Schaefer about the urgent need to rethink how we manage our fire risk, I thought there's no better time to get council and the public on board with a creative solution. Goats are the perfect fit for this work. I've heard from our neighbors in Liberty Lake about the success they've had using goats at the municipal level. And just about everyone else I've talked to about this idea has raved about the effectiveness and cost savings associated with this technique. Instead of using goats to do this work all over Spokane all at once, we're taking a more measured approach. I'm a big fan of pilot projects when we're trying something like this, something that's completely new and different. 
I've heard firsthand accounts of how this method has worked for other communities. But in order to understand if and how this project will work for Spokane, we need to test it on a smaller scale, measure our outcomes, and analyze our results. That's why we're starting with a pilot project. It allows us the flexibility to make adjustments after we find out what will and won't work for Spokane long term. Starting this project on a small scale also allows citizens to get used to seeing goats out and about in their undeveloped parks. The goal of the pilot project is to test the efficacy of goats as an environmentally friendly, cost-effective, and safe alternative for both hazardous fuel reduction and noxious weed control in Spokane's undeveloped city parks. This year, the pilot project took place in Hangman Park. In late October, approximately 200 goats were on site for six days and treated around six acres of land. The treatment consisted of creating a 150-foot wide buffer between the houses along South Highland Park Drive and the natural, undeveloped parkland. The effectiveness of this technique, known as creating a fuel break, was highlighted last year during California's wildfire season. A similar fuel break, also created through a targeted grazing program with goats, was credited with protecting the Reagan Library from destruction. The fuel break was effective because it creates a buffer area, in this case around the library, where fine fuels and brush were reduced. This buffer zone slowed down the fire and made it easier for firefighters to control. This fall in Hangman Park, the goats worked to provide a fuel break between the undeveloped park and the neighboring residential community. Who wants to go first? I'm gonna go. The goats don't perform this kind of advanced treatment on their own. Managing the goats is a highly skilled shepherd. In the case of this project, the city has partnered with Craig Madsen and his company, Healing Hooves. Craig has operated Healing Hooves for 18 years. He started his business after working 14 years as a range conservationist for the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Through Healing Hooves, Craig specializes in managing vegetation through the use of goats. They can only do so much. They're not like, they, they don't have uh, grinders on their teeth. So they will be still, I mean, the tr you see those trees out there, they'll still be standing there. They're not gonna be, they're not gonna eat the little trees off. They'll, you know, take the needle, some of the needles off and those kind of things. So it's not gonna be, you know, to bear, totally bare ground because they can't do that. I mean, they can't, don't have, like they don't have grinders that can eat up trees and stuff. They can take bark off trees and stuff like that, but they won't, uh, uh, you know, it won't be totally bare ground, no. Well, we're, we're focusing on doing six days, roughly six days. We're focusing on a, sm a smaller area, probably, it, it's going to be five to eight acres, something like that, depending on the density of that vegetation in that particular area. So it's going to vary a little bit on the, on the spot, but that's kind of roughly what it'll take. Next year, the pilot project will expand beyond Hangman Park to include Meadow Glen and Minnehaha. Because of timing issues this year, grazing got a late start. Next year, Craig and his team will be able to tackle the three sites armed with a complete grazing season and even more hungry goats. With a five-month window in which to work, Craig's treatment plans at all three locations will be able to be more robust. Each site will receive two separate three to six day treatments, one in late spring and one in mid to late summer. Parks Director Garrett Jones is looking forward to seeing how goats can help him manage some of Spokane's greatest assets. This is a first for us, City of Spokane, Parks and Recreation. And this has happened in other regions around the Northwest and California, but really our first test here. And what better way and what better fit for Parks and Recreation to be a part of this? So we look at the underbrush behind us and, and that's really where then you start, uh, that reaches into the crown of the trees and you really see that spread. And when you look at the topography and the nature of these tight spaces, getting mechanical equipment down here is difficult and also is a huge disturbance to the natural environment. So these goats are able at eye level and are able to raise up and get all that undergrowth that really catches it and has that huge fuel in the summertime. So it's one of the most efficient ways to be able to do this fuel reduction program. And when we look at these catastrophic forest fires, we want to be able to prevent. So how do we invest our dollars wisely to be able to prevent 
this catastrophic fires to happen. Also, this type of prevention is one of the most efficient ways to do it. I expect this pilot project to reduce the costs and losses associated with wildfires in Spokane. By using goats, we're also able to enhance the condition and health of our undeveloped parkland in the process. We'll continue to experience longer, hotter summers in Spokane. Under these conditions, our wildfire risk will continue to grow. It is critical that we pilot new, cost-effective methods to manage our city land most vulnerable to wildfire. If we can begin the work of mitigating our risk now, we can save money, property, and lives over time. I encourage you to come out and see the goats working in your parkland next year. During the spring and summer of 2021, they'll be stationed for a couple of weeks at Minnehaha, Meadow Glen, and right back here in Hangman Park. Thank you to our Parks Director Garrett Jones for working with us to make this project a success. And a very special thank you to our shepherd, Craig Madsen, for making this pilot easy and educational. We look forward to future years of collaboration. Thank you for joining me for this Council Connection. See you next time.